I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. I'm in Santa Monica, California. We're at Apogee headquarters, but more importantly, we're in Apogee studio with Bob Clearman. Great to see you, Bob. Great to see you, Mitch. Thanks for taking time to sit down with us and, and uh, letting us check out this facility, because this is super cool. Thank you very much. This is my pleasure yeah. having you here. So you've got the, the studio, you've got a live room that also sort of doubles as a performance venue, tracking and performance at the same time. That's right. Yeah, it's, a, it's something that I've had in my, my head since the 70s, actually. I just thought it would be cool to, to have a recording studio that's also a live venue. Um, I actually worked on a record when I was just starting out with a band called Cool and the Gang. <laughs> and it was a, a live album that they had made. But then they brought it in the studio and they pretty much re-recorded most of it. You know, they did redo the horn arrangements and, and added a bunch of instruments, but you still had that live vibe. You had the, the live audience and the, and the live performance vibe, but it was a combination live album, studio album. Right. And I thought, what a great idea that was. And I've always wanted to do that. I still haven't done it. I built the studio for it, <laughs> but I haven't done it. So this is a proper studio. This has got the, the uh, 8068 Neve um, that was at the original Studio A console for a power station in New York. Oh, wow. That I made a bunch of records on and a whole bunch, a lot of other people made some amazing records on there. Right. And, um, and so and here we are. And so, uh, we, we've done like about 100 live radio shows for the local radio station wow. KCRW they've actually broken quite a number of very popular bands mm -hmm. and so they bring them in usually for if it's they're just starting a tour or they're just releasing an album they'll come in and do a radio show unfortunately we had to shut down for the last couple of years because of the sure. pandemic right but it's it's so much fun it's about 180 uh, people's uh, standing room mm -hmm. and um, we set up a couple of bars they KCRW takes care of all that part and uh, I just sit here and I mix the radio show here. Oh, that's great. For my Neve. How fantastic is that? It's, I can't tell you how much fun it is. Right. So when you came in, was this basically just a raw space? Uh, yeah, well, when we, we bought the building, Betty and I got the building and uh, we actually, she bought it without, um, we never even saw it. She knew what it was. She knew where it was. She knew the type of building it was. She said, yeah, I'll take it. Wow. Because <laughs> real estate's hard to come by oh, of course, in right. Santa Monica. And, um, but so the other side of the building you've, was uh, the offices. That's where they do the, the sales and marketing and, the, and the, all the, the d designing of the stuff, the graphics, the d digital coding, right. uh, all that kind of stuff. And then behind here, was the big area that became the warehouse and the lab. And uh, this was just a leftover space. This is actually a square office and there was a garage door over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just thought, why, you know, why are we wasting this space? We were just storing old furniture in here and stuff, you know? Right. And uh, so I went in, into Betty's office and uh, <laughs> I said, listen, you know, wow, we could make a really nice little cheap studio in there just so the to produce demos for bands or whatever and just like a garage studio just real cheap and uh she said uh okay well if you stop bugging me get the hell out of my office maybe we'll build a studio <laughs> of course it turned into a bit more right <laughs> you, you need like cheap little studios don't have a not many some a console at, you know a uh, amazing console yeah that, that's not real common in garage studios that's, uh, that's fantastic though. So, wow, so, so tell us the, the process of, of how you kind of decided to lay things out and how you've got it set up. Um, well, <clears throat> I, I kind of basically designed it myself as far as the layout of it, because I, I wanted the stage just opposite the control room, mm -hmm. uh, figuring that I'd be able to watch the show while I'm, <laughs> I'm doing. Of course, it turned out that because it's always standing room, I can't really see anything. Oh. <laughs> and so we put a, a monitor and some cameras up. Oh, there's, sure. there's a, a c camera right above the window so that I can actually see right. without standing up. Right. And, um, and so that was it. And then we, this section off to the right is, main, is part of the room, but then there's folding doors, glass doors, so we can section it off. And I've done things like, um, I've had a, a rhythm section out there a string quartet in there oh, wow. for my friend Nika Costa. We did that. Um, sometimes a 
two acoustic guitars in there. Uh, we put drums in there. I did that on an album of a few months ago for an artist named Lori Lieberman, where the band was out there, grand piano on the stage, and drums in the booth over here. And then Lori sang, this is a, a, an ISO booth, a vocal booth over there, and she okay. sang in there. Okay. And, uh, and not only that, but we've actually wired up the, the bathroom. So, and sometimes we put guitar amps in there. Right. Get that ambience. Yeah. That's awesome. And so as far as gear, of course, Apogee converters, the Symphony, I'm, I'm assuming, is what you're using? We have actually four Symphony IOs over here in this rack. Right. And um, two of them are a Pro Tools rig and two of them for a Logic rig. Oh, okay. And so when we're doing the radio shows, we have a big analog malt on DL uh, connectors over in the patch bay. And so we can send, um, send the outputs of the console to both, okay. the analog outputs. So they're totally separate. They're not... And so if one of them goes down, then we still have have something, and right. it actually has happened. Oh wow! You know, so it's 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 a, it's just a redundancy. Yeah, right, right. Helps. So in addition to that, you've got of course this gorgeous console, which you were you were telling us about, which has to has to be so cool to have this console after all the work you did on it and all the signals that have passed through this. Well, this yeah. Board. Well, this the story behind it is is that I wanted one like it. I was film, familiar with the 8068. The studio where I started had two 8088s, which is this, but uh, eight channels more. Mm -hmm. And this is 32 channels. And um, I thought it would be a great console to have. It's like almost a museum piece now, really. Right. But they always sounded fantastic. The, it's got some of the best mic preamps on the planet and really easy to, to operate. You know, it's a very simple, but great sounding equalizer. And uh, it's got some compression built into it, and so I so I went on Google and I just typed in Neve eighty sixty eight, and then this thing was the first thing that came up, and it said, oh look, there's one intact. Most of these have been butchered. You know, people take the modules out and stick them in racks, and right. so that it's more more mobile, um, which makes sense. But uh, it's so it's hard to find ones in the frame still complete. Yeah. yeah. And so this one came up and it said, whoa, Power Station Studio A. Well, that, that'd be exactly the one that I wanted. Right. You know, I didn't think I'd really find this one in particular. Now, my wife, Betty, she, was, she knew that I wanted one of these because I had mentioned it. And I said, well, that'd be nice to get an old 8068 for the studio. And so she had one of her guys who loves to find stuff on the Internet. He found the same one on the same website. And so we were kind of bidding against oh. each other for a bit, unfortunately. <laughs> so, Drive the price way up, yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> so we probably drove the price up a few grand, you know. That's Just, too funny. Yeah. That's too but funny. But I'm, I'm happy because the guy that sold it to us, a guy named Steve Ripley, who unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago, he was really nice and he, he was... He he actually gave us some some money off of it when okay. we found out <laughs> who we were and everything. Right. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. What a great story. So with the console, then you also have some outboard gear. I see behind me here some of the kind of classics. Oh yeah, we got the Poltex, of course. Can't do anything without Poltex. Got some great. I got an, a couple old LA three A's, which I love. An eleven seventy eight, which is like two eleven seventy sixes, but I actually like it better. <laughs> And an eleven seventy six, um, a distressor. The uh, um, I went out and bought a, a solid state logic uh, bus compressor because mm -hmm. I'm so used to that sound for my mixing on the SSL. So that adds a little nice thing for the radio shows. Sure. When we're mixing through that. Right. Right. And then do you have a, a big collection of microphones that you're working with? Uh Not a huge collection, but it's it's fair enough. I mean. It's mostly live shows, so a lot of Shures, a lot of Shure 57s and 58s. Sure, which always work. Yeah, we got a couple of um, these Sennheiser, I think it's called a 635 um, wireless, which are great. Mm -hmm. um, with a receiver in here. And, uh, and the thing about this console is that it was, an in, it was the first inline desk that Neve ever made. Mm -hmm. And so the, I don't think they were completely sure about how to do it, <laughs> hate to say it, but the, the mics were originally on the faders permanently, uh -huh. and the monitor section were these little knobs here, and so you had to do your mix on there. Well, I knew we would probably be doing live events, so if I'm gonna be doing a monitor mix, I want them on the faders. You know, once, once I get my mic gains, 
we're recording the multi-track, so I'm not going to touch those once they're set. And um, so we did a fader. We, uh, there's a guy named Fred Hill, I think from Nashville, and he came in and he did this two-month overhaul, and we did the fader flip, plus we added a bunch of other features in it. So it's pretty custom yeah. at this point. Very cool. That's awesome. And I also, uh, we were talking earlier, but obviously you've also set the room up for Atmos. That's right, yeah. I mean, a couple of years ago, a Apogee did some projects with Sennheiser, and Sennheiser owns um, Neumann. So they said, oh, you should be using these Neumann speakers. So they, they brought in a couple of these, uh, these three, 310 speakers, which I loved. I just felt they sound so good in here. Mm -hmm. And they, they're just small speakers, and they kick pretty hard. Yeah, they're great. And then um, they set up their own little what they call Ambio, which is like Atmos kind of. Mm -hmm. And so they put some speakers in the ceiling. And um, so then we didn't really use that for a long time. And then this Atmos thing came up and we reworked it a bit. I bought a couple more, uh, well, four more 310s for the sides and the rear. Mm -hmm. And then we had these little 120s that we put up in the ceiling. And um, my friend David Boucher mixed a couple albums in here and mixed some stuff for Netflix, and he loves it. He, even though it's kind of just thrown together, the it's kind of a height uh, discrepancy between the sides and the rears, but he loved the way it sounded. In uh -huh. fact, he kind of he said he preferred it over the um, the the room of, over Capitol, which <laughs> is sort of you know it's been it's got PMCs. I think it's a pretty serious room over there. Yeah, right. Right, well, that's fantastic. And this is just kind of, I don't know, helter-skelter, really. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It looks like it came together pretty well to me. But the thing that's great is that we have the, the um, Symphony I.O., which we've now upgraded for full monitoring. I mean, it actually already did it before we upgraded it. But now with the upgrade, you can have all kinds of different workflows. This is the, uh, well, we'll get into that later. Mm -hmm. But um, you can have, you know, multiple sets of stereo speakers you can have a you can have a atmos workflow you can have stereo workflows you can have a 5.1 you could have a um ra360 if you want you know just about anything that you want up to 16 different workflows you can have up to 32 channels of um monitors 32 mm. monitors that it will control right and so it's, it's all native through thunderbolt right you know, it doesn't it doesn't you don't use Dante with it or anything like that. It's more for smaller systems. Sure. And but it's really simple and inexpensive. And if if anybody that owns a Symphony IO Mark Mark II already gets it as, as a free update, nice, <laughs> which is pretty nice. Yeah, nice, nice. And so the you can control it all then using the Apogee app that runs on the computer, and that allows you to to access all that. But the little remote. But also, it's also got got this this little remote right here, which. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can assign these buttons to do just about anything you want. You know, the, there's the big buttons, the volume control and the mute. Right. And um, you can set it, you can have as, you know, as many buttons as you have. The way I have mine at home is um, I've got three different, no, actually four different workflows on the bottom buttons and then three different sets of stereo speakers on the okay. top buttons. Right. And then right. one of them's a dim. And that really solves the one of the big problems with Atmos, which is having monitor control over all these 12 speakers, speakers simultaneously. Right. And, uh, so having it all with, with the app and the Symphony Mark II, and of course with the remote, gives you a super solution for that. And it's dead easy to set up and incredibly versatile mm -hmm. as well. You know. If you want, I could t point some things out, out there if you want to go. Let's you know, do it. Yeah. I mean, not extensive, but... Uh, <clears throat> no, that's great. It's an old 800. Um, I, think, I think it'll actually go on. Yeah, look at that. It lights up. Great. And it, it does work. I think I think it's missing a power supply at the moment, so it needs a bit of work. But um, the idea, idea was that if anybody actually wanted to record on analog, we we could do it. There's our little front of house desk, which is a. It's interesting that it happens to be a Soundcraft because my wife Betty w was president of Soundcraft America for eight years before Apogee started. You know, in the in the early '80s. Right. So and full circle. So yeah, we ended up with a with a digital sound card, which is actually not a bad little desk for, for what we do is 32 channels. Mm -hmm. And um, and then we have a um, some lights. I don't really know how to work that, 
unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, you know, like stage lights and everything. And and then this where we're standing now is can be an, an ISO booth. There's doors here that slide across, and like I was saying, we can put I put string quartets and right. horn sections and all kinds of things in there. Very cool. So this is our performance space. The the stage was actually the first thing that was built, I think probably because it was the easiest thing to build, yeah. you know, before any of this. And um, and then we, it was just this little stage, and then we started doing bands like um, uh, Damian Marley and Naz, and they had a bunch of guys, and Ozo Motley, and uh, some of these bands that were enormous, and so we had to add these extensions on e either side. Um, and then, um, this old Hammond organ that my wife got me for uh, for my birthday one one nice. year. Nice. Same guy found that that found the console. Oh, okay. Lucas Vandermy. That's great. And th this is actually the, an original from 1963. That the we bought it from the woman who bought it originally in '63. Wow. And she played organ for uh, horse shows, and this is what she practiced on in her her little parlor. Right. How about that? You know. And then so that's the. Uh, Swing around. This is the ISO booth for the vocal booth. Then upstairs is what we call the VIP section. And so we have a couple of uh, little QSC speakers that we add on to the PA. And uh, when we're doing the shows, those, that's all the important people, all, <laughs> right. all of Betty's friends. <laughs> right. And, uh, and then if you come this way, this is. We, built, we actually added this part on to the studio because we needed a green room. Oh, and we also used it as, a, uh, as an additional conference room. Oh, sorry, am I interrupting? No, you're good. You're okay. Good. I was just sitting up for some training tomorrow. That's, that's Matt from Apogee. And that we use it for all video things, and, but it's also the green room when we're ha having a, um, a show. That's great. This is, yeah, there's, this is my old 3348 HR, quarter million dollar tape machine, which is worth zero, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. But every now and then there'll be a tape, somebody will have a digital tape that needs to be transferred, and so it'll come in handy. And of course, now we're coming to the, the most important piece of equipment in the studio, and that would be, that'd be the coffee machine. <laughs> And there you go. Thank you very much. Well, Bob, thanks so much for giving us a tour of the studio. This, this is just a fun space. It's like, you know, if everybody could have their dream home studio or garage studio, this, this would definitely be the top of the, the pinnacle, right? Well, this, this <laughs> was my dream. And, yeah. it, and it actually came true, you know, and uh, it, it was great to actually see it happen. And then KCRW came in and, and they looked at it and I said, oh, geez, we, can we do radio shows here? Yeah, absolutely, and, right. and and it's just been so fantastic. Not only that, but for Apogee, it's been great for development of the products, right? Because they can come in here and try them out in real world, and those guys, I let them use the studio, mm -hmm. and so they they can use the gear and see what you know what the good things and the bad things. Let's fix the bad things. Okay, what what does the stuff need? Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's been a really creative. Uh, addition for uh for for apogee as well right not only that but it's it's just an amazing feeling because it's very down to business on the other side right and then you walk through the door and there's there's, there's this really cool <laughs> recording studio <laughs> that's awesome